So this just came in. It is the BMAX Y13, a 13.3 inch 1080p IPS laptop that has a 360 degree hinge. It's touch of course, and it's powered by the Gemini Lake N4100. So it's a Celeron chip. It's paired up with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. So let's get this unboxed and take a look at it and see if the BMAX Y13 is any good. So let's have a look at what we get inside the box. I'm not too fond of this Decepticons or Autobots logo there, Transformers, if you're familiar with it. I think it's actually on the leather laptop as well, but hopefully it doesn't look too bad. There it is again, so double box. We'll take a look at first what we get inside this box here, which would probably be our power supply, right? Yep, it is. Okay. So DC in plug there, and I do believe it does support full function type C, so it should have power delivery. So we have an EU plug there, UK and US. So they've got three types of plugs. Now this is rated to probably your typical voltage, which it is, 12 volts, two amps that's pretty standard for gemini lake laptops and tech that i review so this is surprisingly well packaged it still has the factory seals on it that i had to cut here at the bottom and there is the laptop doesn't feel too bad the weight of it i will measure it in just a second and we've got an instruction quick start guide here too so that's in various languages so we've got european languages there english of course uh, russian is there too and chinese and korean and then the weight of this laptop is 1.269 kilos, so almost 1.27 kilos. It's not bad considering this is a 13.3 inch laptop. Okay, so let's take a look at it here. We still have, unfortunately, that logo there that looks like it's the Decepticons Transformers right here. So metal lid on the top here, it does have a plastic protector on the top of it. That's to stop it from getting scratched up in the warehouse. Now we've got a 360 degree hinge right here. And the keyboard, that looks quite good. Now, the keys, you can't actually see them on camera here because of the angle and the light. And this is a backlit keyboard, but if I move it slightly now, that you can see those keys. They're a little hard to make out. Uh, just on camera here, in person, they don't actually look too bad. It's just that angle. Does feel good, these keys, actually. They've got a good feel to them. It looks very slim. Now, we've got speakers up the top here for, apparently, I can see there are some status LEDs. Our power button right here. Screen bezels look good. I'll just have a look at the hinge, the stiffness of it. That, that doesn't seem too bad, actually. Okay, hopefully that's not going to loosen up over time. That's always a, a area of concern there for me. So the palm rest, this is made out of plastic, okay? It's a painted plastic. Touchpad is large. Hardware left and right clicks there. And let's take a look at the underside. So the bottom of it, I can see already we've got an easy access SSD hatch that you can see there, four rubber feet, and of course there are no grills on this because it's fanless. The Gemini Lake doesn't need to be actively cooled. Uh, it will run fine, just passively cooled there. So we have a 4C brand. This is 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters. It's SATA 3 SSD in here. So full size, that's good because then you get the better write speeds normally. And the brand, okay, 4C there, not that common, but uh, I've seen a lot of them out there. And you can easily upgrade this to two terabytes if you wanted to do so. And very easy to swap out. It's just those two screws there and this third screw. Remove that and you can install, uh, for example, a crucial drive, one terabyte one or whatever. Just don't buy PCIe or NVMe SSDs because they will not work in here. Now to get into the internals here, you've got to remove all the screws on the bottom, but there are two that are hidden just under these feet right here. That's where you'll find two additional screws. Remove those, and then the lid just pops off. So first thing you notice is most of the internals is taken up by the battery because it's a thin laptop. They've had to spread it out, and there will be probably, I can feel, it looks like two cells in here, and it's 38 watt hours in total. Now with the Gemini Lake laptops, in my experience reviewing them, this will last for about seven to eight hours max, depending on your brightness, of course, and what you are doing. We've got a large copper heatsink here, which is good to see. Now for those uh, of you that are into mods, I can already see one area of improvement is we could put a thermal pad right over the top of this. That will then transfer heat over to the bottom of it, because the bottom is made out of that alloy, and that will be actually quite good then for transferring heat through and just removing a bit of it from the CPU core itself. 
All right, so I've jumped into the bias here. I just wanted to show you that it's completely unlocked to us. And this is a good thing because we can adjust the power limits. These are under CPU configuration. Now what they are using is just auto. And to me, I think auto for power management is just the six watts on the Gemini Lake. So they set power limit one, you can see right there to auto. So later on, you could actually go in and change that to say nine watts or 10 watts if you want to boost their performance. But first I want to check and confirm the thermals are okay before I do that. So this laptop is really slim. It's just 14 millimeters. Now with the rubber feet on the bottom, that brings it up then to about 15, but overall quite good. But they didn't have room then to fit a full size type A USB 3.0 port. You can see we have, this is type C Gen 2, so it's USB 3.1, so we've got display out, power delivery as well, supports. Now, I did actually just check it. I'm getting 4K 30 hertz out of my Type-C adapter, but I can't seem to get 4K 60 for some reason. I need to test further that, and then DC in for charging with the included charger. And then on the right-hand side, you can see our power button. It looks like it's this one here that says BMAX, right? But you press it, it does nothing. They've disabled it. It's rock solid, super hard. So the power button is on the side here. Now it is a plastic button. I saw that when I opened up the laptop. So I don't know whether that's gonna fail later on, but it's a possible area maybe for issues. Micro SD card slot and then another Type-C port. But this one is only USB 3 and then our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which also does support mics. Now this is interesting, when you take a look at the Chewy AeroBook, which is on the right of the screen, this keyboard is exactly the same, the layout and the quality of it. So it's a good keyboard to type on, but take a look at what I was talking about before of the visibility, okay? Look at the arrow keys in this area, very hard to make out. Now it depends on the angle, but where the camera is right now, it actually looks a lot worse than it really is. But when you take a look at the Chewy AeroBook's keyboard, which is also backlit, it's fine, you can make out all the keys there, all the letters without any problems. So why on earth did they go with the silver here? They should have just used the same black plastic with the clear through, see through for the backlight of course, and it would have looked a lot better on this. And the touch pads, are they the same? Well, it's actually a tiny little bit smaller here, but overall both have very good touch pads. And this is a great keyboard to type on because it's almost pretty much exactly the same as typing on the AeroBook which is a great keyboard, one of the better ones you'll find in these cheaper Chinese laptops. So you can see here that this backlit keyboard is a little bit unevenly distributed and the lights are not very bright. We've got two different settings here. So this is off on the first level, which is very dim, and then the brightest setting. But take a look at the H, for example, and then over here, even the enter key has a dull spot to it. So it's not a high quality backlight that it has. So let's jump right here into Windows with just a couple of benchmarks. I'm just checking the wireless. Now it's got the 9461 Intel wireless AC chip in there. It does support Bluetooth 5, which is good. Now the maximum in theory speeds we can get are 433 megabits per second. I'm a couple of rooms here away and these speeds actually seem quite decent for this type of chipset that we have on here. So no real problems with that. Now Geekbench 5 score if you're interested. Nothing amazing, okay? The base mark score 1000, if you get single core 1000, that is a Core i3 8100. So this is well below it, but this is a very low end chip. It's all about efficiency, this chip. The quad cores it's got, maximum turbo is 2.4. So we have Windows 10 here, and the screen so far is very good. So maximum brightness is 380 lux. Now I've got it right up real bright now at the moment because I'm seeing only on camera, by the way, this, which is happening, and that is flicker. You'll see it start to come in now, and right down on the lowest setting, there's a lot there. So pulse width modulation is controlling the brightness there, but I can't see it off camera. It's just on camera, it's happening, and it is a slight annoyance, and, and I do apologize for that. So free space we get on the C drive is 211 gigabytes to start out with, which is fine. I've benchmarked the internal storage. I just actually saved the file over here. And very good speeds for, for what it is, you know, SATA three speeds right here. So you see here, it's nothing amazing. Okay. They're okay, they're decent for what it is. Now if you want slightly faster, use a higher quality drive. So get a crucial drive, something like that in there, and up to two terabytes as mentioned you can get 
with uh, the 2280 sized ones right there. So Windows is a recent build. It's 1903 that it comes with, fully activated. It's actually Windows 10 Pro. I didn't expect that, but the license seems to be valid and no problems with that that I can see. It's not like a hacked uh, activation or anything like that, as far as I can tell. Passing virus scans. If you're not happy with that, then I do have a pen drive made up myself as well. Uh, do a clean Windows 10 install. I have drivers on my website later on. I will be backing them all up. So I'll just quickly show you a little bit more of this screen because it is very nice. Now touch support, of course, and it is working really well. No problems. I found the accuracy is really good and I roll the screen very decent, better than I expected. It doesn't have any real problems at all with any light leakage or bleeding around the corners. It is fully laminated too. I was a little concerned because the website did say fully laminated, but with the Chinese, you can just never trust them because a lot of the times they will say things like that, that it's laminated and when you get it, you find out it's actually not, but no, definitely it's working uh, well here. Now this screen's out of the box calibration surprised me. It's hardly off at all. This is the current calibrated view. I'll switch back to how it is out of the box. And there's basically no distinguishable difference here between them, which is very good. The same goes for the color gamut, which does surprise me. So Adobe RGB of 74%. Then we have sRGB of 95% and NTSC of 70% their color gamut. So this is very good coverage for a $300 laptop. So now onto the audio. So we've got just those four tiny little speakers that you can see just above the keyboard and they definitely do not surprise me at all. The fact that they don't have any bass to them really. They're quite flat. Volume could also be better, but here's a very quick sample of them. All right, as you can hear from that, that they are really lacking volume. You can use uh, software out there. There's one called DFX Audio Optimizer or something like that along those lines that can boost the volume, but it's not going to really give us any more bass. So they are disappointing speakers there. Will they be loud enough that you can actually hear and watch videos with other people? Yes, but only just. So what can the Celeron N4100 do? Well, light tasks, so internet, documents. It can play 4K HEVC files without a problem. Uh, this is my website. And I'll just demonstrate the touch here too, that scrolling, that is actually smooth. It's fine, it's running well here, uh, bringing up the Windows 10 menu, not seeing that typical stutter. Now this is after I updated all of the Intel drivers. So there's a Intel driver update utility, run that, you get all the latest drivers, and I'm not finding any issues. Now the wireless range and strength seems to be fine as well, just wanted to quickly report on that and also show you, so editing spreadsheets, things like that is what this is ideal for. So nothing too strenuous for this little tiny CPU that we've got in here. It's just a six watt by default CPU. So you're able to edit that, that's fine. That's uh, just some Excel spreadsheets. And here we've got document editing too. This doesn't lag and get all choppy. You can have a lot of pages. It's got 83 pages here at the moment and you see that that's all fine, no problems. I just quickly searched too here in Google, show you the speed of that. So something very random that I haven't searched yet. So cats, okay, uh, it pops up and scrolls in fine. So I'm just going to open up a whole bunch of uh, pages right here. And we'll just check and see how quickly that loads. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, but we will see some noticeable slowdown. Once you start to run about 10 tabs or so, but the eight gigabytes of RAM is definitely helping. Let's just take a look and see how we're going with the RAM use right now. So we're just over half, 60% full right now. So everything has loaded in there. I can swap between those tabs. Okay, some things I, I can see noticeably choppy. Okay, that's because it's got a big um, flash animation thing, video there at the top. That as well, swapping between them there. So overall, decent performance for these light tasks. That's what this is for. So don't buy a laptop like this expecting to edit 4K video or play the latest Battlefield games or Fortnite at 60 frames per second 1080p. And I thought I would just quickly check out the performance here with some games. So very light title, which is Counter-Strike Global Offensive here, 720p. Uh, not really great, is it? It's only 23 frames per second. I'm on a server that is full at the moment. 
And the little Gemini Lake in here, the Sauron N4100 is struggling, especially with that smoke effect. So thermals, they are checking out. We're getting 76 maximum. This is after I was gaming for about 20 minutes. And if it had a problem with the thermals, you'd see it already, even with just such a short gaming stint of only 20 minutes, it would reach 90 if it didn't have that copper there, of course. So I think the cooling is going to do its job. Okay, so I've got Linux min here. This is 19.2 running and the touchpad is working fine. The control for our screen brightness, volume also working, wireless is working, Bluetooth as well, but touch. That's the only thing. So no touch support with Linux. I like the build of it. We've got metal on the lid, metal on the bottom, upgradable SSD. So if you're not happy with the 256 gigabytes that it has, it comes installed with Windows 10 Pro. I didn't expect that. Then you can put like a one terabyte or 512 gigabyte drive in there quite easily without having to open the whole thing right up. So the hinge is quite stiff. I don't see that being an issue. I think it will last years like that. I hope so. Uh, and of course, we've got a little webcam in the top. I didn't mention that when we were looking at the design, but it's only, I think it's only two megapixels or one. It's HD quality and the frame rate seems about 15 frames per second. It's not very good, but it is flanked either side. Well, either side of it are microphones, so dual array mics at least. So that's good there. It doesn't support Windows Hello. You're not going to get it with a cheap laptop like this. Now, we've only got the Type-C ports either side, which I think is a bit of an error. Uh, you really need, to me at least, to have one Type-C, Type-A port, sorry, so full-size USB on there. I know we've got with the other port, We've got data uh, and video and power, so it will support apparently power delivery with that. And the other thing too is the logo on the rear. <laughs> what were they thinking? So they've got a Decepticons Transformer style logo on the back that, uh, yeah, why'd they put that on there? It would have been just better with nothing. I would have preferred that. I'm pretty sure you as a viewer as well would have. Unless of course maybe you're 13 years old and you think that's kind of cool or a big Transformers fan. Who knows? So the keyboard, backlit but it's not evenly distributed. Okay, this light through it is a little bit dull around this area. The keys themselves, very good, high quality plastics. So it's very similar to the Chewy Lapbook, Aerobook, sorry, or the Lapbook SE's keyboard which are some of the better keyboards you'll find on these cheaper Chinese laptops that I do review. And you don't get any bounce, you don't get any flex there either. It's just they should have used black keys with white key actual letters on there or just painted white letters on top of this one to make it more visible. It's just a little bit hard to see those letters at certain angles. Now the touchpad, it does work really well. It does support Windows 10 gestures and the accuracy finer movements are good. So that's great. So the screen's fully laminated but it doesn't support a stylus. Battery life, you're looking at seven hours or more, depending on your brightness, up to possibly eight, I can see already. Charge time's about two hours and 40 minutes with the 24 watt hour uh, charger, sorry, 24 watt charger that it's got. It's a 38 watt hour battery that is within this. So overall, I think it's a decent laptop, but just be aware of those cons, those possible deal breakers, like the no full-sized USB port on there. Or if you wanna run Linux, you're gonna have to dig around and hunt for drivers and solve the problem of the touch screen not working within Linux there. So thank you so much for watching this unboxing slash review of the BMAX Y13. I will have the BMAX Y11 in the channel, but that'll probably be about two weeks away. So I hope to catch you before then with more up and coming reviews in the channel. Bye for now.